Canto 13 Ere Nisus landed on the other shore, we for our part within a forest drew, which of no pathway any traces bore, not green the foliage, but of dusky hue, not smooth the boughs, but gnarled and twisted round, for apples poisonous thorns upon them grew. No rougher breaks or matted worse are found, where savage beasts betwixt Cornetto roam, and Sicina, a boring cultured ground. The loathsome harpies nestle here at home, who from the strophides the Trojans chased with dire predictions of a woe to come. Great-winged are they, but human-necked and faced, with feathered belly, and with claw for toe. They shriek upon the bushes wild and waste. Ere passing further, I would have thee know, the worthy master thus began to say. Thou'rt in the second round, nor hence shalt go, till by the horrid sand thy footsteps stay. Give then good heed, and things thou'lt recognize, that of my words will prove the verity. Wailings on every side I heard arise, of who might raise them I distinguish not, whereon I halted, smitten with surprise. I think he thought that haply twas my thought, the voices came from people among the trees, who, to escape us, Hiding places sought, wherefore the master said, From one of these snap thou a twig, and thou shalt understand how little with thy thought the fact agrees. Thereon a little I stretched forth my hand, and plucked a tiny branch from a great thorn. Why dost thou tear me, maid? the trunk demand. When dark with blood it had began to turn, it cried a second time, Why wound me thus? Doth not a spark of pity in thee burn? Though trees we be, once men were all of us, yet had our souls the souls of serpents been, thy hand might well have proved more piteous. As when the fire hath seized a faggot green, At one extremity the other sighs, And wind escaping hisses, So was seen at where the branch was broken, Blood to rise, and words were mixed with it. I dropped the spray, and stood like one Whom terror doth surprise. The sage replied, Soul vexed with injury, had he been only able to give trust to what he read narrated in my lay, his hand toward thee would never have been thrust. Tis hard for faith, and I, to make it plain, urged him to trial, mourn it though I must. But tell him who thou wast, so shall remain, this for amends to thee, thy fame shall blow afresh on earth, where he returns again. And then the trunk. Thy sweet words charm me so, I cannot dumb remain, nor count it hard, if I some pains upon my speech bestow. For I am he who held both keys in ward of Frederick's heart, and turned them how I would and softly oped it, and as softly barred, till scarce another in his counsel stood. To my high office I such loyalty bore. It cost me sleep and haleness of my blood. The harlot who removeth nevermore from Caesar's house, eyes ignorant of shame, a common curse, of courts the special sore, set against me the minds of all aflame.
and these in turn augustus set on fire till my glad honour's bitter woes became my soul filled full with a disdainful ire thinking by means of death disdain to flee gainst my just self unjustly did conspire i swear even by the new roots of this tree my fealty to my lord i never broke for worthy of all honour sure was he if one of you return mong living folk let him restore my memory overthrown and suffering yet because of envy's stroke still for a while the poet listened on then said now he is dumb lose not the hour but make request if more thou'st have made known and i replied do thou inquire once more of what thou thinkest i would gladly know i cannot ask ruth rings me to the core on this he spake even as the man shall do and liberally what thou of him hast prayed imprisoned spirit do thou further show how with these knots the spirits have made incorporate and if thou canst declare if from such members error is loosed a shade then from the trunk came vehement puffs of air next to these words covered it was the wind my answer to you shall be short and clear when the fierce soul no longer is confined in flesh torn thence by action of its own to the seventh depth by minos tis consigned no choice is made of where it shall be thrown within the wood but where by chance tis flung it germinates like seed of spelt that's sown a forest tree it grows from sapling young eating its leaves the harpies cause it pain and open loopholes whence its sighs are wrung we for our we for our vestments shall return again like others but in them shall never be clad men justly lose what from themselves they've ta'en dragged hither by us all throughout the sad forest our bodies shall be hung on high each on the thorn of its destructive shade while to the trunk we listening lingered nigh, thinking he might proceed to tell us more, a sudden uproar we were startled by, like him who, that the huntsman and the boar, to where he stands are sweeping in the chase, knows by the crashing trees and brutish roar. Upon our left we saw a couple race naked and scratched, and they so quickly fled the forest barriers burst before their face speed to my rescue death the foremost pled the next as wishing he could use more haste not thus o lano thee thy legs bested when one at topo's tournament thou waste then haply wanting breath aside he stepped merged with a bush on which himself he cast. Behind them, through the forest onward swept, a pack of dogs, black, ravenous, and fleet, like greyhounds, from their leashes newly slipped. In him who crouched they made their teeth to meet, and, having piecemeal all his members rent, hailed them away, enduring anguish great grasping my hand my escort forward went and led me to the bush which all in vain through its ensanguined openings made lament james of st andrews it we heard complain what profit 
hast thou making me thy shield, for thy bad life doth blame to me pertain. Then, halting there, this speech my master held, Who wast thou that through many wounds dost sigh, mingled with blood, words big with sorrow swelled? O oh, souls that hither come, was his reply, to witness shameful outrage by me born. Gather them to the root of this drear thorn, my city, for the Baptist changed of yore, her former patron, wherefore in return he with his art will make her I deplore. And were it not some image doth remain of him where Arno's crossed from shore to shore, those citizens who founded her again on ashes left by Attila had spent their labor of a certainly all in vain. In my own house I up a gibbet went. Canto fourteen. Me of my native place the dear constraint led to restore the leaves which round were strewn to him whose voice by this time was grown faint. Thence came we where the second round joins on unto the third, wherein how terrible the art of justice can be, is well shown. But clearly of these wondrous things to tell, I say we entered on a plain of sand, which from its bed doth every plant repel. The dolorous wood lies round it like a band, as that by the drear foss is encircled round. Upon its very edge we came to a stand, and there was nothing within all that bound but burnt and heavy sand, like that once trod beneath the feet of Cato was the ground. Ah, what a terror! O oh, revenge of God! Shouldst thou awake in any that may read of what before mine eyes was spread abroad. I of great herds of naked souls took heed. Most piteously was weeping every one, and different fortunes seemed to them decreed. For some of them upon the ground lay prone, and some were sitting, huddled up and bent, while others, restless, wandered up and down. More numerous were they that roaming went than they that were tormented lying low, but these had tongues more loosened to lament. O'er all the sand, deliberate and slow, broad open flakes of fire were downward rained, as among the Alps in calm descends the snow. Such Alexander saw when he attained the hottest India, on his host they fell, and all unbroken on the earth remained. Wherefore he bade his phalanxes tread well the ground, because when taken one by one, the burning flakes they could the better quell. So here eternal fire was pouring down, as tinder neath the steel, so here the sands, kindled, whence pain more vehement was known, and, dancing up and down, the wretched hands beat here and there, for ever without rest, brushing away from them the falling brands. And I, O oh master, by all things confessed victor, except by obdurate evil powers, who at the gate to stop our passage pressed, who is the enormous one, who now way cowers beneath the fire, 
with fierce, disdainful air, lying as if untortured by the showers. And that same shade, because he was aware that touching him I of my guide was fain to learn, cried, As in life myself I bear in death, though Jupiter should tire again his smith from whom he snatched in angry bout the bolt by which I at the last was slain. Though one by one he tire the others out at the black forge in Mongibello, placed while, ho, oh, good Vulcan, help me, he shall shout, the cry he once at Philegra's battle raised, though hurled with all his might at me shall fly his bolts, yet sweet revenge he shall not taste. Then spake my guide, and in a voice so high, never till then heard I from him such tone. O oh, Capaneus, because unquenchably thy pride doth burn, worse pain by thee is known. Into no torture, save thy madness wild, fit for thy fury couldst thou be thrown. Then, to me turning with a face more mild, he said, Of the seven kings was he of old, who lingered Thebes, and as he God revealed, him in small reverence still he seems to halt. But for his bosom his own insolence supplies fit ornament, as now I told. Now follow, but take heed, lest passing hence thy feet upon the burning sand should tread. But keep them firm where runs the forest fence. We reached a place nor any word we said, where issues from the wood a streamlet small. I shake but to recall its color red, like that which does from Bulikemi fall, and lustful women later among them share. So through the sand this brooklet's waters crawl. Its bottom and its banks, I was aware, were stone and stone the rims on either side. From this I knew the passage must be there. Of all that I have shown thee as thy guide, since when we by the gateway entered in, whose threshold unto no one is denied, nothing by thee has yet encountered been so worthy as this brook to cause surprise o'er which the falling fire flakes quenched our scene. These were my leader's words. Full of supplies, I prayed him of the food of which to taste. Keen appetite he made within me rise. In Middle Sea there lies a country waste, known by the name of Crete, I then was told under whose king the world of yore was chased. There stands a mountain, once the joyous hold of woods and streams, as Ida twas renowned. Now tis deserted like a thing grown old. For a safe cradle twas by Rhea found, to nurse her child, in and his infant cry, Lest it betrayed him, she with clamours drowned. Within the mount an old man towereth high. Towards Damietta are his shoulders thrown. On Rome, as on his mirror, rests his eye. His head is fashioned of pure gold alone. Of purest silver are his arms and chest. Tis brass to where his legs divide. Then down from that is all of iron of the best, save the right foot, which is of bacon clay. And upon this foot 
doth he chiefly rest. Save what is gold, doth every part display a fissure, dripping tears. These, gathering all together, through the grotto pierce away, from rock to rock, into this deep they fall. Feed Acheron, and Styx, and Phlegathon. Then downward, travelling by this straight canal, far as the place where further slope is none, Cocytus form, and what that pool may be, I say not now. Thou'lt see further on. If this brook rises, he was asked by me. Within our world, how comes it that no trace we saw of it till on this boundary? And he replied, Thou knowest that the place is round, and far as thou hast moved thy feet. Still, to the left hand, sinking to the base, Nathless, thy circuit is not yet complete. Therefore, if something new we chance to spy, Amazement needs not on thy face have seat. I then, but master, where doth Leith lie? And Phlegathon, of that thou sayest not, Or of this thou sayest, those tears its flood supply. It likes me well to be thy besought, But by the boiling red wave, I was told, To half thy question was an answer brought. Leave, not in this pit, shalt thou behold. Thither to wash themselves the spirits go, When penitence has made them spotless sold. Then, said he, from the wood tis fitting now, that weed part, behind me press thou nigh. Keep we the margins, for they do not glow, and over them, ere fallen, the fireflakes die. Canto 15 Now lies our way along one of the margins hard. Steam rising from the rivulet forms a cloud, which gainst the fire doth brook and borders guard. Like walls the Flemings, timorous of the flood, which towards them pours betwixt brugs and cad sand, have made that ocean's charge may be withstood. Or what the Paduans on the Breta's strand, To guard their castles and their homesteads rear, Ere Kirantana feel the springtide bland. Of the same fashion did those dikes appear, Though not so high he made them, nor so vast, Where the builder was that piled them here. We, from the wood, when we so far had passed, I should not have distinguished where it lay, though I to see it backward glance had cast a group of souls encountered on the way, whose line of march was to the margin nigh. Each looked at us, as by the new moon's ray men peer at others neath the darkening sky, sharpening his brows on us and only us, like an old tailor on his needle's eye. And while that crowd was staring at me thus, one of them knew me, caught me by the gown, and cried aloud, Lo, this is marvellous! And straightway, while he thus to me held on, I fixed mine eyes upon his fire-baked face, and, spite of scorching, seemed his features known, and whose they were my memory well could trace. And I, with hand stretched toward his face below, asked, Ser Brunetto, and is this your place? O oh, son, he answered, no displeasure show. If now, Brunetto, 
the Latini shall some way step back with thee and leave his troop to go. I said, With all my heart for this I pray, and, if you choose, I by your side will sit, if he, for I go with him, grant delay. Son, said he, who of us shall intermit motion a moment, for an age must lie, nor fan himself when flames are round him lit. On, therefore, at thy skirts I follow nigh, then shall I overtake my band again, who mourns a loss large as eternity. I dared not from the path step to the plain, to walk with him, but, lo, I bent my head. Like one who steps, are all with reverence tame. What fortune or what destiny, he said, hath brought thee here, or e'er thou death hast seen, and who is this by whom thou art onward led? Up yonder, said I, in the life serene, I in a valley, wandered all forlorn, before my years had full accomplished been. I turned my back on it, but yestermorn. Again I sought it when he came in sight, guided by whom I homeward thus return, and he to me. Following thy planet's light, thou, of a glorious haven, canst not fail. If in the blithesome life I marked aright, and had my years known more abundant tale, seeing the heavens so held thee in their grace, I, heartening thee, had helped thee to prevail. But that ungrateful and malignant race, which down from Fiesol came long ago, and still its rocky origins betrays. Will for thy worthiness become thy foe, and with good reason, for among crab trees wild, it ill befits the mellow fig to grow. By widespread ancient rumor are they styled, a people blind, rapacious, envious, vain. See by their manners, thou be not defiled. Fortune reserves such honor for thee. Fain both sides will be to enlist thee in their need. But from the bleak the herb shall far remain. Let beasts of Fiesol go on to tread, themselves to litter, nor the plants molest. If any such now spring on their rank bed, In whom there flourishes indeed The blessed seed of the Romans, Who still lingered there, When of such wickedness t'was made the nest. Had I obtained full answer to my prayer, You had not yet been doomed, I then did say. This exile from humanity to bear, for deep within my heart and memory lives the paternal image, good and dear, of you, as in the world from day to day. How men escape oblivion you made clear, my thankfulness for which shall in my speech, while I have life, as it behooves, appear. I note what of my future course you teach. Stored with another text, it will be glossed by one expert, should I that lady reach. Yet would I have this much to you disclosed, if but my conscience no reproaches yield. To all my fortune is my soul composed, not to me the hint by you revealed. Therefore let fortune turn her wheel apace, even as she will, 
the clown his mattock wield. Thereon my master right about did face, and uttered this, with glance upon me thrown. He hears to purpose who doth mark the place. And none the less I, speaking, still go on with Ser Brunetto, asking him to tell who of his band are greatest and best known. And he to me, to hear of some is well, but of the rest tis fitting to be dumb, and time is lacking all their names to spell. That all of them were clerks, know thou in some. All men of letters, famous and of might, Stained with one sin, all from the world are come. Priscian goes with that crowd of evil plight, Francis da Corso too, and hadst thou mind, For such like trash thou mightest have had sight Of him the slave of slaves, to change a sign from Arno's banks to Bacchilione, where his nerves fatigued with vice he left behind. More would I say, but neither must I fare, nor talk at further length, for from the sand I see new dust clouds rising in the air. I may not keep with such as are at hand. Care for my treasure, for I still survive in that my work. I nothing else demand. Then turned he back, and ran like those who strive for the green cloth upon Verona's plain, and seemed like him that shall the first arrive, and not like him that labors all in vain.